In this video, you will learn how to make a progress bar with smooth transitions. If you've never used one, I will show now how simple it is to make. Suppose I'm making a shooter game where I want to have a health bar in the bottom right corner of the screen. I will open up my player character blueprint and make two new variables. The first one will be called health with a value of 120. The other one will be max health, which will be twice as much, so 240. Next, we want a progress bar, of course. For this, create a new widget blueprint by right-clicking in the content browser and under user interface at the bottom, select widget blueprint. I will name mine W underscore player stats. Inside, you can find the progress bar component in the palette window. Type progress bar and drag and drop it onto the canvas area. As I said, I will drag mine to the bottom right corner. This means I will have to move the anchor point to the bottom right as well. To make the bar fill upwards, I will choose fill type bottom to top and fill color will be an orangish color. We can now display our progress bar on the screen. One way is to switch back to player character blueprint and on event begin play, call the create widget function. Here, select your widget, which for me is W player stats. This will create a widget object, but won't display one yet. So to do that, we must follow it with an as to viewport, which will do the job. It seems to be working but the progress bar is still empty. That is because we haven't linked it to our player's health variable yet. But first we will need a reference to our player character by casting to that blueprint. For object we can use getPlayerPawn, which in the game looks for a player at index 0 which happens to be the only player in this case. Then, we store the value of that cast into a new variable for later use. If you click on the progress bar, it shows progress setting in the details window, which means percentages from 0 to 1. Next to it, we have a bind button. Click on create new binding, which will open up a new window with two nodes in it. This is a bind function with a return pin which will set that progress setting automatically. Our health variable is mapped from 0 to 240, so to squish it in the right interval from 0 to 1, we will need to divide health by its upper limit. If you run the game again, we can see the bar is half full which is correct, since current health is at 120, whereas maximum is at 240. Now I want to show you how to make that transition effect. For this, we will need events tick, so that the effect can happen over time. We will also need an additional variable, called health progress, which will be displayed instead of the actual health. The new value of health progress will always become a halfway from the current health progress to the true amount of health. We can achieve this using a lerp node, which has a percentage spin called alpha. This way it can move by each time making half of the distance and eventually end up very close to the target. Those 50% will be stored in a variable called fill speed. Let's not forget to change progress bar's bind function so that it uses this new health progress variable. We are almost there, but for me this transition feels a bit too fast. So let's lower fill speed down to 0.2. Now it's better. Let's say there's an enemy shooting at us 
and each second our health decreases by 10 points. We can simulate this effect with a timer inside our player character blueprint. It must therefore loop each second. This will continuously fire a new custom event. I called it get hit, which will take 10 from our current health on each execution. To make sure hell doesn't reach below zero, we can use a clamp node with a minimum of zero and maximum of at least max health. This simple effect can improve your game's feel not only in widget design, but in other parts of your game as well. If you have any questions, write them in the comments. And until next time.